Hello and welcome to Leaders Room by Eclipse the Leadership and Governance Center. We're sitting here today at our annual Leadership Energy Summit Asia, where we have the privilege of sitting with leaders, not only from Asia, from all over the world, to talk about their uh, wisdom and insights. So today it's an honor for me and a privilege to be sitting here today with uh, Ms. Isabel Medam, uh, founder and CEO of XRunner. So hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So I guess we'll have about maybe 15 minutes to, to talk a little bit about uh, what brought you here, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so actually one thing that stood out when I was looking at your bio and reading your stories is the word entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And it made me realize that I didn't even really know what it meant. <laughs> so I had to go look it up in the dictionary. And the definition that I found, you know, I actually have it written here. You know, it's a little bit kind of left me a bit unfulfilled mm -hmm. because uh, according to, to my online dictionary, it says entrepreneur is a person who starts a business and is willing to risk loss in order to make money. And that's it. <laughs> so uh, I was just wondering, you know, I were to ask you, um, what is your definition of entrepreneur? What do you think of when you think of this word? What, it, what does it mean to me? Um, I think to me it means to take things into your own hands. So um, uh, for me it has more of a, of a definition, uh, almost, almost activist-like, yeah. in the sense that um, you define something or you realize that you care about something, anything, okay. um, and it becomes so important to you that you just want to do something, either about it, or for it, or sort of invent something new, but it's something that you decide that you are gonna take into your hands, as opposed to, you know, reaching the conclusion, oh well, things won't ever change, or I'm not good enough for that, or other people, you know, if if it's such a good idea, why hasn't anyone else done it already? Okay. Sort of ignoring those things and just saying, well, I'm gonna try it. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, that's what it means. Well, well one of the reasons I asked. Isabel, because uh, she is one of the top, you know, recognized as one of the top entrepreneurs in, in the world. And uh, this has to do a lot with X-Runner. So maybe just take a moment, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, what is X-Runner, what's your story? Well, X-Runner, what, what, what X-Runner does um, is we provide low-income urban households with um, a safe and modern toilet system okay. that improves their lives wow. uh, in a way that, um, doesn't compromise dignity and doesn't affect the environment. Um, and we do that because there are millions and millions, billions of people worldwide who don't have a proper toilet in their home. Um, they have everything else, okay. in th th everything other than a toilet to go to the toilet. So I think we're used to sort of modern, comfortable um, uh, toilets that we don't even think about, right? Exactly. right? It's like, oh yeah. yeah, and several times a day, every day, and it's not a choice. It's not like you can say you want to not go to the toilet, you have to go to the toilet. Right. Right. And, and, and we have the privilege of um, just not having to think about it. But uh, a third of the, the world's population does have, every time they go, have to deal with unhygienic, scary, um, sometimes even dangerous conditions. And sure. so our goal is to, um, for each and every one of these people around the world, um, replace that situation with a, with a modern um, and safe and dignified version. Wow. Well, that, is, that certainly expands a lot more from that definition that I found on, on yeah. online, <laughs> right? So, um, so where is the bulk of the operation of X-Runner? Uh, the, the, we, we operate in Peru, okay. in, the, in, in the capital, which is Lima. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And what kind of scale are we talking about here? How many households? Mm -hmm. We currently serve 600 households, okay. which uh, means that 3,000 people, individuals, use this toilet. Wow. Um, okay. And if you consider that we do all of this on a basis of, um, uh, first of all, having developed a system that, that tries to be complete and, and sort of and good on every level. So right. not just the toilet in the person's home, because w but also, for instance, we go and pick up the accumulated waste, right, right, right. and then we turn it into compost. So in order to provide people with a perfect and dignified toilet solution, we also have to do everything else well. We can't only just put a nice right. toilet and not care about what happens with it. We have to do everything. So given that, and given the fact that we charge for the service, mm -hmm. Um, 600 households is a lot because right. low-income urban households have so many priorities 
for spending their, their limited resources mm -hmm. that have sort of p trying to fit in one more thing that they would want to pay money for is very challenging. Right, right. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a process. It's not just yes. putting, you know, something there, right? So uh, I have to ask this. Mm -hmm. So why this? There's so many other things in the world. Why the, the portable uh, toilet? I mean, now, why this? Mm -hmm. Because I think, I believe that everybody should have, I mean, it's a human right to have access to, to good sanitation. And I think that um, all human rights should be sort of fulfilled. And so to me, that's why it's important today. Mm -hmm. Back then, it's a less glamorous thought. It was, it was just that I didn't, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and uh, I, I tumbled into X Runner a little bit. It didn't. It didn't. I didn't say. I met a friend who she's now my friend and business partner who right. who was thinking about doing that. And I thought, oh well, it's an interesting idea. I'll give it a try. Okay. But it. But um, and that's how it started. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. 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 Well, I mean, because it's, you know, it's you can think of so many things that that that, uh, that you can do in the world, right? And this would be, perhaps not at the top of the list. You know, because yeah. you originally you're from Vienna, Vienna, right? But yeah. your mother is, is Peruvian. Peruvian. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, at Eclipse we like to think about leadership as being driven by this values and purpose. Mm -hmm. you know, how clear you are about what you want to get done with your with your life. Mm -hmm. So, and oftentimes these leadership energy, if you will, mm -hmm. is is you know is driven by by moments. Where you maybe perhaps you faced the, the greatest challenge in the journey, or even just before you decided to jump on the bandwagon, to dedicated your life for for a cause like this. Um, so perhaps maybe if I could ask you to share some of these uh, so defining moments, you know, along this journey of, of establishing X Runner. Yes, I mean the, the there are the, there are defining moments prior to X Runner, and then defining moments during X Runner, and I think. Prior to X Runner, um, uh, one and, and that is a moment was um, um, when I would travel to Peru to my mother's country and suddenly see poverty because, as I told you, in Vienna I grew up in Vienna and Vienna is not a poor city. Uh, all the con on the contrary, and so s seeing poverty in, in Peru just didn't make sense to me. I didn't. I, I was so I didn't understand. I was like, wait, how come people live in those conditions? And then at the same time, you have this whole other side of Peru where people li live in a luxury that you also don't find in Vienna. So, uh, and, and that just was very defining because I thought, well, I, I don't accept that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't think that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, because I would see the poor ha the houses of, of, of poor or low in income people and I would just start to imagine what I would feel like living right. in there. And I didn't like that. So I was like, well, I don't think they like that either. Yeah. And so let's do something about that. Um, and then during X Runner, I think um, a defining moment that helped me just continue was seeing that people accepted the solution. Okay. And the way that I saw that was because they paid for it. Right. Um, and paying for it is the best way to, to see whether it really makes sense or not. Exactly. Because then they, they could say, no, I don't want that. I'm, I'm not going to pay that for this. Right, 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 but they right. said, yeah, and so I could, and then, uh, and then, and that was super um, inspiring because it, it said, it showed us, well, you're on the, uh, you're doing something sure. right, right? It's worthwhile, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, I'm actually sitting here thinking about the fact that yeah, you're right. I mean, it's you know, putting putting a toilet in someone's house. It's it's not just a matter of putting the toilet there, right? There's so many other things that you have to think about to make sure that this, you know, the the, the circuit is completed. Yeah. Uh, was there some things that came up during this journey that you sort of didn't think of it, kind of surprised to you along the way about putting this? Um, yes, sort of, th for instance, our toilet works with um, sawdust. Right. So it's a toilet that is dry, that okay. doesn't use water. Sure. And what it uses instead is sawdust that you pour over and that, you, that has to sort of dry and sort of cover up everything. Uh -huh. I didn't know that there are so many different types of sawdust and that one actually makes everything worse and another is actually really good. Uh, and uh, I was just like, let's buy sawdust and put it there. And then uh, so things were going wrong and, uh, I was, and suddenly we were confronted with having to do research about wood and the quality of wood and right. types of sawdust. And, and those are the, the, that's very typical for, for everything entrepreneurial that you suddenly have to deal with things that you didn't think were important for, for this. 
Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Well, so what's next? What's next um, is that we want to um, uh, overcome the, the biggest challenge that we always face, which is um, 600 households is a lot. But then when you look, w w every time we go to those communities and, and the sun comes out and the sky is blue and we suddenly start seeing how big the community is, right, to right. just sort of feel like, oh my God, this is really uh -huh. big. And uh, we want to do that by, by really getting the government involved in this right. as well. And Peru now has a new government from as of a couple of months ago. Sure. Um, a government that seems to be a little bit more interested in actually you know, doing something. Sure. And, um, and that's something that we really want to want to push, sort of to, to, to have the government understand that in order to get everyone um, to give everyone proper sanitation, they, they must also look at, at options that are not traditional okay. and have the courage to be a bit more um, entrepreneurial themselves right. Right. And, right. and take right. a few risks and try out new things. Okay, great. So it's kind of you've cleared the hills now. You can s begin to aim for the summits. A little right. bit. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Very yeah. Good. So uh, we, we're coming towards the end of our mm -hmm. session today. So uh, anything you'd like to leave for other leaders out there, other entrepreneurs? Entre other entrepreneurs. There, yes. Um, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, was, I thought about a couple of things. Uh, and I think the first one is links a little bit to what I just said about sort of seeing suddenly the, 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 the larger scope. And I think as leaders, it is, it's really important, difficult, but important to be able to, to at the same time think big and do small things. So sort of um, have the huge vision and, and be like, yes, that's where I want to go, but also be able to see, okay, and now I have to do these small things to, to get a bit closer. Okay. Because often, I mean, if you don't have a vision, you'll get frustrated really soon because right. you won't understand the context of the things that you're doing. But you also have to be patient enough and understand that it, it will take you a while, that the vision is a guidance for you to right. do small things that bring you closer to it. You have to be able to appreciate small successes as well. Okay. The other thing is, I think that's something that you always hear, is that you have to be good at listening, okay. really listening, and yeah. also listen to yourself. Uh -huh. um, and then the last thing I would say is something that I learned in all of this is that you have to be aware of your role as a leader. Maybe you don't want to be a leader, maybe you don't, um, you're scared of it, but it's a, it's, a it's a role that if you take it seriously and if you start identifying with it, has great potential because you can, uh, you know, get people to on board for things that are important to you. Excellent. So great. yeah. Very good. Well, I, now I know why you know uh, we invited you, <laughs> here, Lisa, because a lot of what you say resonates really well with uh, what our beliefs at at Eclip as well. Mm -hmm. And today I actually have a have a better definition for me anyway. You know, <laughs> entrepreneur. You know, so it's actually a short. It's a better one with a shorter one too, which is uh, think big and do small okay. <laughs> okay so thank you very much isabel for sitting with us with us today and uh have a great rest of the uh, lisa summit mm -hmm. and then uh, hopefully we'll see you again in the future thank you thank you for having me and for taking interest in in x runner something that's happening on the other part of the world great thank you <laughs>